Hi guys, welcome back to Isaac Arachnids. Firstly, don't forget the competition to win some baby huntsman slings is still ongoing. And I'll put a link in the description below for the video that you have to watch if you want to enter the competition. But let's get on with today's video. Today's video is going to be about new and old world tarantulas. Why are they new world, why are they old world? And the difference between the tarantulas as well. But also I'm going to do it mainly because the biggest misconception that I hear people say all the time is, oh, new world, yeah, they're the latest species discovered. This is completely wrong. That is not why they are new world. So we'll go through why they are new world tarantulas and why they are old world. Hopefully this information is good for people out there that aren't sure about these things. And if you like it, as always, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share my videos and why not subscribe? That's enough for me talking now. So I'll let you get on and watch your video. Bye for now. Right guys, so here is a map of the globe. And as you look at your left hand side, this is classed as New World Species, otherwise known as the Western Hemisphere in North America, Central America, South America. And as you look at the map on the opposite side, we've got Old World Species, which are from Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia. And this pretty much is what separates New and Old World Species of Tarantulas. So hopefully that clears things up. All right, guys, so this is my Embalfori. The Embalfori is from Yemen, which is in Saudi Arabia, on the continent of Asia, which makes this Eastern Hemisphere, which makes this an old world. It's only a little sling, but it is very aggressive. The other thing you have to look out for with old worlds is they are skittish and they're very fast. That's another difference between them and the new worlds. Although there are some new worlds that are pretty quick as well. Then you've got other species that are more aggressive, which are Thailand Black. That's a stunning spider, but also aggressive. You've got the Cobalt Blue. I've got one of these. It's a nightmare at times. It can be very aggressive. Here I have my P. Metallica. This is from India, which is also... Eastern Hemisphere, making it an old world tarantula. Try and get a decent shot for you. Um, old world tarantulas have far more potent venom than the new world tarantulas do. Um, a new world tarantula, you're probably looking at maybe a bee sting. Certain old worlds, you're looking at being hospitalized. That's the difference between them. It's a lot stronger. I did get a feeding video of this for the first time the other day, so that will be coming up soon in my next feeding video. And everyone knows the most aggressive one, an OBT. Ah! All right, on to the new worlds. Right, guys, so that brings us on to the Gramastola Acteon, or Brazilian Red Rump. It says it all in the name. It's from Brazil. It's from South America. South America, North America, Central America. That is the new world. So this is a new world species. As you can see, even then when it's moving, it's not skittish, it's just moving slowly. Absolutely stunning species. Lovely black body. Nice red hairs on the abdomen. We'll get a closer look at that. There we are. Abdomen is absolutely stunning, which gives this species its name. But don't let those hairs fool you. This one here is my female Brachypalma homore or Mexican red knee. Again, says it in the title, Mexican red knee. It's from Mexico, South America, Western Hemisphere, New World. Um, as you can see on the abdomen, you can see the little tiny hairs. These are called urticating hairs. They do itch and New Worlds have the ability to flick them at you as a defense mechanism. They're not so skittish. They are a lot slower, but 
I can tell you as much as I handle this, as you can see in the picture, if those hairs get on you, they can itch for a fair bit of time. And while I'm talking about the hairs, this is the Caribbean Aversi color. I only found it while doing this. This is the only AVIC that actually flicks his hairs, which I find amazing. Right guys, so that brings me on to my Salmon Pink Bardia Malassi Dora Parabana. I wasn't gonna put her in this video at all, but at the moment I feel a little bit sorry for her. Um, for a start, her name is Big Dog, so I believe the name needs to be changed. And also she needs a enclosure update a bit like the uh, Brachy Palma Homore ad from my last video that I did. Um, getting back to where I was actually meant to be, trying to zoom in on the abdomen here. The articating hairs on the abdomen, they come in six different types. Um, I personally like to cause the itchy scale because type one is the least itchy, type six is of the worst. But they come in six different types, which I will now go through. All right, this is my GBB. I'll try and get a decent picture, but I'm not sure I'll be able to. Um, so type one of the articating hairs is normally found in male brachypalmas. Type 2 you find in Avix in the Carabina, which I was saying about before. Type 3 is in the Therofosa, the t Armies, and the t Blondies. Type 4 comes in the Gramastolas. Hang on, this isn't doing, I'll change the spider. Right, so this is my Red Island Birdie, sir. Um, right, I'm getting off topic again. So type 5 on the uh, Articating Hairs is the i'm not sure i'm saying this right but ephibopus or the skeleton spiders um and also type 6 i've never even heard of is a hemorrhagus if anyone knows what that is please let me know um so what it boils down to really is avix and chilean rose you have mild irritation if you get caught by the hairs of a t blondie or brazilian giant white knee then you'll have a lot of nasty rash a lot of irritation and it will last for days. Hope this clears up the difference between old and new, and thanks for watching.